Hello everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on analog modulation. Our topic for today's discussion is to understand how modulation in DEX M actually affect the amplitude modulation in time domain. This will be the part five series discussion on amplitude modulation. The earlier on series discussion, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about amplitude modulation. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe buttons. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, if you learn something or you recall something, please help by like and subscribe this video. Thank you so much. Okay, firstly, let me discuss about the application of amplitude modulation. One of the earliest application of amplitude modulation is the AM radio, which don't really exist in today's world. Okay, the AM radio on that day is basically ranged from 535 to 1705 kilohertz. How it actually operates is exactly what I have discussed with you on the amplitude modulation. Let me on the animation in order for you to understand better. The diagram on your left is the modulated signal. The diagram on your right is the modulating signal. So from here, you can see that how does the modulated signal change according to the modulating signal? You probably also observe there is a modulation index in between the two figures. You can also see how does the modulated signal change according to the modulation index. So this is our objective for today. We are going to understand how modulation index affect the modulated signal in time domain. In short, okay, for example, for this case, distortion actually occur and we are going to discuss how can we avoid this situation. This is a modulating signal that we have discussed extensively on the previous few video. If the modulation index is less than one, okay, you can see that the envelope of the modulated signal is exactly the same as the modulating signal. Okay, by now, I guess you know that at the modulated signal, the envelope actually contain the information, okay, which is the modulating signal. So as long as we can constrain the modulation index less than one, okay, we can actually easily recover back the modulating signal as shown from this diagram here. Next, Okay, when the modulation index is exactly one, okay, which means that we definitely still able to recover back the original modulating signal. Okay, however, okay, you can see that the V meme is at the threshold, and hence this is the maximum allowed modulation index. Okay, which means that as long as more than one, okay, this will be undesired. As you can see from here, when M or the modulation index is more than one, distortion or over modulation actually occur. And from here, you cannot retrieve back the original modulating signal from the envelope of the signal anymore. Can you see here? So instead, you follow my lines, you can see that this is the signal that you're going to retrieve back. And this is not exactly the modulating signal now. So therefore, this is undesired and we need to avoid. So when M is more than one, the okay, over modulation actually occur. And because of this over modulation, distortion occur and we can't recover back the original modulating signal. In short, okay, the modulation index need to be bigger than zero and less than one. Okay, let's quickly understand what is double sideband full carrier, double sideband suppressed carrier, and single sideband suppressed carrier in time domain. I have shown you the frequency domain, but today I'd like to show you 
in terms of time domain. Okay, so this is the carrier, okay, the carrier that does not carry any information at this moment. Okay, so this is double sideband full carrier. Okay, you can see that modulating signal still appear at the envelope of the modulated signal. Next, we have this double sideband suppressed carrier. Okay, so this is with the suppressed carrier. Okay, they are not the same shape as the modulating signal now. And last but not least, we have this single sideband suppressed carrier. Again, okay, the envelope does not have the same shape as the modulating signal. Okay, this requires more tedious okay, in order to recover back the original signal, which I'm going to explain to you on the next few video. The first one is the double sideband full carrier. Next will be double sideband suppressed carrier. You realize that the carrier is missing now. Next, this is single sideband suppressed carrier with only the LSB lower sideband. Okay, you can see that the carrier and the upper sideband are missing. Next will be still the same as single sideband suppressed carrier. Okay, from here you realize that the lower sideband and the carrier they are missing. Okay, one thing I want to point out. Okay, you realize that this diagram is with respect to power and this is with respect to amplitude. Okay, so on the next video, okay, I will discuss how can we represent amplitude modulation in a power spectrum. Next, okay, so let's quickly discuss the different function of double sideband full carrier, double sideband suppressed carrier, and single sideband suppressed carrier. Okay, so this is the transmit power. Okay, from here you can see that this has the highest transmit power. This is lower and this is the lowest transmit power. In short, okay, you actually can save lots of power okay, if you're going to utilize this single sideband suppressed carrier to send the message over to the recipient. As for bandwidth, okay, for double sideband full carrier, you have two times the modulating signal. Double sideband suppressed carrier, you also have two times the modulating signal. However, for single sideband suppressed carrier, you only have one time the modulating signal. In short, okay, double sideband full carrier and double sideband suppressed carrier, they can carry more information because they have a larger bandwidth. We talk about the modulation and demodulation circuit. The double sideband full carrier, you can see that they use larger power. Okay, but one of the attractive things about double sideband full carrier is the simple circuit that you require for both the modulation and demodulation. Okay, as for double sideband suppressed carrier and single sideband suppressed carrier, the circuit actually can be complex and definitely require more component in order to make up the modulation and demodulation circuit. As for the noise level, okay, for double sideband full carrier, okay, the noise level is high, same as double sideband suppressed carrier. The attractive part about single sideband suppressed carrier is it has relative low noise level. Okay, with this, I'd like to end our discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much, guys.